Brick Maniacs, hey, it's Lando here. Super excited for the F-22. Cody's joining me today. I'm not Because he built this. This is an officially licensed Lockheed Martin kit. We've been waiting for the F-22 for a very long time, and it is here. And it's official. And it's official. That's so cool. Um, that was a, a bit of an ordeal to get to get that license through, but we did it. We got mm -hmm. it. We're working with them. They gave us the green light. Thumbs up. More to come. More to come. But uh, so yes, this is the F-22. So let us get right into it. F-22. F-22A, if you will. If I will. Which is the only model that exists. <laughs> it's the A model. Okay. There was a, a B model planned as a two-seater trainer that was canceled, and there was also a Navy version with swept wings Ooh. planned that was also canceled. <laughs> okay. As well as production of the entire thing. Oh no. So yeah, there's uh, just over a hundred, maybe like 187. Yeah. Maybe to be exact, 187. <laughs> I think. So to be exact is 187. <laughs> if I'm remembering properly, yes. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you show off the top-down view of this thing? Because that's one of my favorite. I just love the. It's you nice, captured that shape perfectly. It's got a nice shape to it, and I'm holding it by yeah. the stand. By the stand. Where am I? Are you helping? Is it hovering? <laughs> so when this thing flies, it can actually maintain that going super slow. It's like practically. We got to witness it daily yeah. at EA. Can we cut to that adventure. footage camera guy? Yes, he said. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Whoa. So it's going it. super slow. So it, it has thrust vectoring yeah. capabilities. Is that what's going on when they do that? Yes. Well, nice. so I'll, I'll, I'll just show that feature off right now. So I have a couple of thrust vectoring doohickeys. So what does that do? That's the technical term, is the doohickey. <laughs> M1 doohickey. You can vector your thrust, Landon. That's what it does. <laughs> Ooh, so, spin just around. Like that. So they open them up, they can close them, you can go faster, slower, you can make tighter turns and do that cool thing where you just the barely cool move. So. Mouth thrust really vectoring cool. is all we have. Just really, really powerful engines. You gonna mouth thrust vector? I'll let you handle it. Okay. That's no. your department. <laughs> Wait, I'm looking at this camera, at this camera. Mouth vector. <laughs> Did that just make him? So I, so I model it after Brendan's mouth when he vectors his words. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you just speak sideways to people? What is pointy? No. <laughs> yes, I got a smile from the speak camera sideways. guy. sideways. Okay, anyways. <laughs> okay. Um, Where are we? Yeah, so this is a, a stealth multi-role fighter. How many roles does it have, Cody? It's a fifth generation r worth of roles. Wow. <laughs> so this was developed to replace the F-15 um, as an air superiority fighter, uh, but I don't really think there is a way to replace the F-15. It just fills different roles. And we're fighting words right there. And we're fighting words, so. Um, it does carry quite a load, yeah. um, like the F-15 does, maybe not quite as much because it's stealthy, so it has an internal missile bay mm -hmm. that houses a lot of its munitions, but it can also have four underwing hardpoints, each capable of holding up to 5,000 pounds. So you use a really expensive stealth fighter and make it not stealth. Right, why but I, that's, okay. that's why, uh, so it fills other it roles awesome. as well. It's, it's a tactical fighter. Okay. So you can have a lot on it, but then it's, you know, you lose something when you add more to it. Right. Like, you, you lose your stealth capability doing that. But for a certain mission, if you're just on a bombing run, you can just load it up. Who cares up. if you're coming? <laughs> Aren't there like cheaper planes to do anyways? Right, so yeah, cheaper planes have 15, right? That, that would be it. So this is like an initial 15. strike. But yeah. production was eventually canceled um, for the more formidable F-35 coming on the line. Ah. They invested more in that program than they did in the F-22 program. Still an awesome jet. It's the, the most awesome jet. It's the most awesome jet. It has the most advanced avionics in the world. In the world. In the world. So it, it was flown recently in Syria and closest it ever came to Ooh, getting shaking. in air-to-air -air combat was against an Su-35, where an Su-35 encroached on American airspace, and the F-22 chased it out of there, shooting flares, and they almost had a mid-air collision <laughs> before eventually the Su-35 
Was he, was he lost or what was going on? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Just a squabble over who owned what air, <laughs> I guess. I don't know if I'd want to get into a squabble with the most advanced fighter jet in the world. So it's so that was Russian's most okay. advanced and then American most advanced and so um, that's hopefully we never see that battle take place. Right. Who, who knows what would happen? But yeah. So the idea behind I know what would happen. The idea behind this jet is you can fire before the enemy even sees you. Right. And take them out before they, you're in visual range. Um, that's the idea behind it. Yeah. Cool. So, anyways, a lot of working features. Actually, this model has more positionable, functional pieces than the F-35 did, that, uh, the F-35B that I made last year. Yeah. Uh, I think there's 27 in this one. Wow. Maybe more, I forgot. I, I'm not gonna count right now. But, yeah, it includes, it includes the stand, display nice. stand. Um, it's a little stronger, it can, be a modification of the aircraft stand that we did sell last year. Um, you just beefed it up a little bit for this bigger model. Yeah, I did. Uh, it's got a deeper connection. It goes in deep into the model, longer axles. There really. you go. Um, so it, it holds well. Yeah. I, I can pick it up by it and, and swoosh it. Ooh. It's not a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, includes the stand. That's not sold separately. It does have positionable flaps and ailerons. Elevators and the thrust That's even just like I showed off yeah. earlier. And there's also an arrestor hook underneath. Yes. I really like you're pointing this out. Um, this piece right here is, is surprisingly sturdy on there. It looks like it's just connected by like two studs. It's, it's a fun connection. It's probably my favorite feature. Yeah. You, actually, you got really excited. You came over my desk, like, check this out. <laughs> Look how this is connected. And, I know it's a little simple. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's a very strong, it a fun connection. Surprisingly strong connection. Anyways. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. You'll, you'll see it. You'll enjoy it. I really, uh, enjoy it. As you're spinning this thing around, it's it's got a really cool head-on profile. Um, if you want to aim that, yeah, yeah. So coming up with the design, I usually start nose and work backwards. Sure. I did that again on this model. Uh, it's a tough nose to create. It's a it's a super com uh, compound. There's several angles going on at there's the same angle, time. There's a straight angle going down, tapering down, and then. It, it's stealth. Anything stealth is just really hard to translate. And then from the side, form. it also like aims. It's got like a right. That's yeah. That's what yeah, I'm talking right. about. So trying to get that silhouette going down, and my goal is to capture the shadow. Sure. That that hard edge produces because it's an angle on top, right. angle on bottom, kind of shaped more like a boat underneath. So, so angle like, one, it, it turns like that um, from the top. Mm -hmm. um, it's tapering inward. Yeah. Um, so yeah, tapers into a point tapers up from the bottom, tapers down from the top, <laughs> and then the sides are also tapering in. So, and also keeping it producible, right. restockable. So it's, that's, it's, uh, that's one of the most- we always go through. Like complex, uh, I guess sculpting at this point, this is what, what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, it, you're, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. <laughs> there's, there's um, it's switching back and forth from studs out to studs up a few times in there, isn't it? Quite a few. Right. So. Yeah, that's that's probably the most intense part of the build. Otherwise, it, it wasn't too complicated. Once sure. I got past that, got past the intakes, I'm actually really pleased with how the intakes turned out as yeah, well because yeah. that's an also another angular thing that hard to translate. And yeah. then brick building a light gray perimeter all the way. Yeah, down. that's really it's a really sharp looking model. That was I mean the was fun. you know the aircraft in general is really cool looking, so I think it has captured that nicely. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Lando. What else? Keep going. Keep going. Uh, yeah, so I went off most of the movable features. We also do have the internal missile bay. I'll see if I can show this off for camera guy. So there's, I included two side widers, two AMRAMs. Part of its loadout, if I can get my finger on the door. So in real life, it's a double door system, but for playability purposes, I just went with one larger door that opens down. Otherwise, sure. it's gonna be impossible to get your fingers on that little joint without it falling apart. So I went with strength more than I did accuracy on how the doors actually do open. Um, and it, there's a Sidewinder missile that pops out, and they do this in real life. They actually kind of throw the missile out so they can open the missile bay and close it in under a second. That's super open fast. It, shoot the missile, close it in under a second. So Because every single that, every single moment that, you're, that that missile bay is open, you're way bigger on, on radar. Right, exactly. So you can grab the missile. I did put it on a little bit of a hinge so you can get your finger on it. Once it angles out and pulls it's it not out. a flick missile. Sorry. It's not a flick missile. But I was pretty bummed about that. <laughs> yeah, the, I was thinking about. Well, I was thinking about one of the spring-loaded shooters. Right. Do you have the uh, <laughs> flick missile ejector ejector seat yet? Not yet. No, not Next yet. model. That'll be cool. He's the only one capable of creating <sighs> that. So awesome. 
What was that even on? It was on the Warthog, <laughs> which we also saw at EAA. Yeah. Air Venture. Yeah, Air Venture. Yes. So the large missile bay here is actually on a double door as well, and that's because when it's on the ground taxiing and you have to get the missiles up inside, the door is too large to open. Can you show the... So they have yeah. to... You have this other you get smaller door hinge ah. that bends up with it, so you can have more ground clearance. Um, and then inside of there, I stuck the AMRAM. Nice. You want to get rid of that stand? I'm going to deploy the landing gears next. I can, yes. Yes. Good idea. Good idea. That's why I thought of it. As you can see, it's a strong connection. All the strength. It's a strong model, too. Woo! Um, it's, it's very chunky. Very chunky. Yeah. Whistle in there. Easy to load and unload. And it's got the white interior of the missile bay. Ah. And also, we have landing gear doors here. You can't see it, can you? <laughs> what do you? Where's the so do you have, to, you have to take that off to deploy landing gears? You don't have to. I find it easier okay. um, to just take that little door off. That's why I left it moderately connected. So this is a nice, really simple uh, landing gear that's actually very sturdy. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going after more now than anything. Um, brand new Lego is kind of hit or miss yeah. on its strength and durability. Mm -hmm. So, especially with a large, heavy aircraft, you have to keep yeah. your landing gear structurally sound. And the thought was that you're probably you're probably going to have this display on like displayed on a cool stand with the landing gears. Up. Probably. That's probably the most common configuration. So. So the other thing too, I put a third hinge in here, which might have been overkill. Um, so if you want to make it a bit easier, you if can. If you want to make it a bit easier you can pull it out. I was just nervous of the gear wanting to collapse if you're pushing it around too much. Sure. So there's, you'll see there's three click hinges per okay, um, yeah. large wow. landing gear wheel. If it's a little too strong for you, just pull it off. It's really easy. Nice mod. I'm gonna mod nice it. Nice mod. Leave out a click hinge. Figured I would describe okay, it. Okay, so that's the back two. Back two, front ones. Kind of a double door system. Another annoying feature. Yeah. <laughs> is, is having small, um, single wide doors. Sure. They're hard to and especially to a build. Yeah, especially given the the complex um, sloping of of the nose of this this aircraft here. And having it be strong. So because you opted I, for this one to just kind of it, it stows in there. Um, yeah, I opted for strength. Sure. Um, and that's I'm, you're probably going to see me doing that more often. Because one of the worst complaints I have is oh my. My landing gear collapsed. Landing gear. Where you have to add. Like <laughs> you, a you hardly get that complaint, but it's still it's a factor that I want to avoid at all sure. costs. Sure. Um, and, but this does have a playability feature, so you can pivot it on that bar, and you can make it so it turns around. Yeah. So it's strong enough to move around. Okay. There we go. Around so it doesn't want to fall. Ah. Uh, because that's always that, that's. Because if you put it on a click hinge, especially the front wheel, if you're going back and forth, it's going to want to collapse. Right. So this is strong, great for your mock, won't fall over. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, because that, that's one of the, I don't know, more common error, errors or whatever, um, malfunctions is that you see the landing gears collapse when you push the when you push some airplanes that in some models. So this is a nice robust system uh, that kind of prevents that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And we have a cool cockpit. Yeah. We have a cool minifig. I want to talk about your sure. fig. Um, so this is kind of an advanced um, minifigure here. Um, so it's basically the F-35 yes. pilot. Uh, so it's a very, it's uh, it's the same artwork from the F-35, which this is where that figure artwork debuted. Um, I like the updated um, pilot uh, mask and helmet. Um, yeah, which it's, is really it's cool. all 100% Lego in the kit. There's yeah. no brick arms. There's no minifig cap. Yeah. So very cool. It's got a new face. Yeah, uh, that was actually designed by MN Art Girl Amanda. Mm -hmm. um, I was out of the office that week. And yeah. out in, in uh, you were in Germany. I was in Germany, so <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. yeah, she took over and made a cool face. Um, right on. Aside from that, uh, Slam did all the artwork. Um, yeah, stickers, all the sticker artwork. Got some ejector seat triangles. Um, yep. We have else? the cockpit display. I actually have the wrong colored cheese slope on here. Oh. It's a trans bright green. Yeah, that's there we go. Put in there. So that's one feature I saw that whenever they're taxiing on the runway and there's a front view, someone took a picture of it, you see that. It's that hood glowing. Yeah. It's, it's glowing cool. inside. So hopefully that you'll see that better with the correct color piece. That's yeah. just, we're still working off the prototype model here. Um, 
some custom so printing here. Yep, custom printed there. And what's the it's that um, that represents the cockpit, the glass on there? Or how does, what is that? Yeah, it's it comes to a sharp point okay, on, here the, we go. on the nose. So, well, I'm going to show. Oh. Gonna show sorry, them. sorry, I'm sorry. There's also a printed uh, <laughs> display. I, don't, I think camera guy can see it. Fire! Fire! Tire there we acquired. Go. <laughs> also from the F-35, that printed tile. So, very cool stuff. Incredibly cool stuff. Let's get this thing back on the stand, how about? Okay. 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 Sweet. Stand. <laughs> so maybe it's coming in for a landing here. That's slick, that's cool. Very cool <laughs> model. Thank you. That's cool. I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think uh, we're all pretty excited to see this get built, and we're all pretty excited as well. All right, uh, this is the F-22 designed by Cody Osal. We finally made an F-22. It's something we've been waiting for for a long time. Officially licensed. Officially licensed. That's right. This is the second kit now from Lockheed Martin. Second Lockheed model, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is our second officially Lockheed licensed Lockheed Martin kit, and uh, more to come. More to come. Oh yeah. What do you got working? Nothing, Anyways, nothing. Um, F-22, Cody Osell, Lockheed Martin, Brickmania. Did I get all the keywords right there? Perfect. Right on. That's the episode. Thank you for watching.